Hunted by mysterious forces, a young woman who has supernatural abilities must go on a run when her powers are discovered. With nowhere else to go, she flees back to her family in the farmhouse she abandoned long ago. There, while being pursued by local sheriffs, she begins to mend the broken relationships with her mother and daughter and learns that the power she needed was inside her all, all alone. alone. <laughs> As we're going to do it, as we do it every single time, Jason, what is your one sentence review of the movie Fast Color? This movie should have been named Slow Color or Slow as Snail Shit Color. <laughs> <laughs> My one sentence review is when you try to capitalize on the YA trend, but you black. It's my voice in this review of Fast Color. Um, this is the point where we will probably insert some kind of ad here. Man, it's your boy Jim Shoot. Keep it the chip too, but in your face. All right, man, we make art, we sell art. Thank you guys for watching this video. Just want to let you know that each and every video is sponsored by InYourFaceArt.com. You'll be able to check down the link in the description so you can see many of the artworks that we do, designs, t-shirts, posters, customization, all that great stuff. So thank you for joining us, man. Thank you for coming to watch this video. I hope you get a lot of great value from it. All right, Jason. This was our very first user, customer, I guess. Uh, oh, yeah, viewer <laughs> review movie that we had. Uh, just spoiler alert, the, the person that asked me access to watch this was my aunt. So, you know, go and give a shout out to my aunt Linda. She thought it'd be something. I got an aunt Linda too. Hi, auntie. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought we would do this. So, Jason, what are your thoughts on Fast Color? Uh, yeah, this is a slow burn <laughs> like this for half the movie i am like when is this going to get interesting and it does but i'm like when is it going to get interesting <laughs> it is a very methodically placed movie this is not your traditional superhero power movie where everything's blowing up every five seconds this is certainly a family drama with some superpowers mixed in uh and i did not appreciate it until like the end and I'm I'm glad I finished it because I enjoyed it at the end. But it was definitely a journey getting there. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, it's slow. I I think one of the things I guess probably was detrimental to me was uh, they should not have put so much focus on Ruth per se as they should have put more focus on her mother because I feel like that would have been a better story. Just seeing her raising her granddaughter. With they're both having these sets of powers, and then Ruth showing up to kind of dis, you know, discombobulate their uh, homogeneous or their their nice lifestyle here in a world where there's no water, which is also like a cool like setting too. Where it's like, yeah, we're all fucking dying of thirst out here, <laughs> even though there's still clouds in the sky. I don't see how that works, but like uh, sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes you do just got to let it slide. I know I'm the worst at letting things slide. I'm like, but they're clouds. They should be able to have rain sometimes. But I don't know. I'm not a weather. I'm not a meteorologist. I don't fucking know weather. But uh, the world is interesting. The very the end of the movie is very, very cool. Um, a lot of things kind of like all happen at once at the end. So it's kind of like a rush to the ending. Uh, and then it's kind of like, I guess they're rushing to set up a, a sequel that will never happen because this movie's already mm -hmm. four years old at this point. But like after sitting with it, like I, I enjoyed this. This this is not going to uh set someone's a you know, they're not gonna set a fire into someone and be like, I want to go make more of these movies. But it's still like a cool thing to see. I think the way I appreciate this more is because this uh deals with primarily just three black women and dealing with the emotional trauma of growing up as black women and and also they have powers <laughs> and this kind of stuff like makes me think of my mom because my mom always says there's not really many uh movies or properties or anything where there is an older black lady as a main character and that's why i would like this movie to be more about them because it kind of switches from ruth to her mom after a while but mm -hmm. You know, I, you could you could say that she's actually the main character of this. Uh, you can probably make an argument for that, that the mother is the main character. And I really appreciate, you know, how fleshed 
out she was, I think is the, the, word, is the word I'm looking for, as well as like, you know, then, you know, the little girl, daughter who's uh, black girl magic, hashtag black girl magic all day, every day, just <laughs> being the best at everything, Mary Sue and the shit out of things. But this just showing that like they had the power to not be afraid all along. And this that's kind of like the message of the story, even though they were kind of afraid, they should have never been afraid. And I think that's cool. And that they could have changed the world, you know, if they had not, if they have let themselves do so. So I really enjoy this, even though it is slow. <laughs> like very, very <laughs> slow. I cannot tell you enough how slow this is. It's slow. <laughs> All right. All right, he he no, will be exaggerating, but he's exaggerating a bit. Um, this movie is wildly underrated, man. And I am so mad at myself that I did not rush out and see this in theaters when this was out. This is like you said, this is a very huge character study of black women's trauma and generational teachings that may not always be up to date with what the culture is at the current moment. Uh, me and Jason talked about things that our parents would do to us when we were children because of the environments we grew up in or because of just traditional almost slave or poor people mentalities that were passed down and how we don't do that with our kids because our kids don't live in those environments we grew up. This movie is that. And they kind of mm-hmm. simulate those things through the powers and abilities of these women. This movie gave me a lot of like unbreakable feels not unbreakable mm. because of how the tone is but, but when you watch unbreakable for the first time before you know the twist it's just a character study of a man that can't figure out who he really is and he finds out who he really is is because he 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 had powers he was he should be something more so i really really appreciated that because i think unbreakable is one of the better superhero movies of all time that nobody talks about because the rest of M. Night Shyamalan's career, kind of whatever, but also, like yes. Jason said, it's a slow burn, just like this movie. It's a yeah. slow burn, and it does slow because they want you to sit with these characters. They want you to empathize with these characters. They want you to see these characters' lives and the decisions that were made by other people and how it shaped their lives. Even going to the godfather, or the grandfather, and how decisions yeah. that were made has shaped everybody's lives around them, and you're correct. If this could have gotten a sequel, they got rid of all the heavy lifting we needed. So that sequel could have turned up. So that <laughs> this black girl's just completely... doing magic shit. Ha ah, ha, we're doing family. Yeah. We're saving the world. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that the sequel could have been X-Men. It could have been her forming a group and a team of black girl magic to go out here and get, get it done. Because they do. They make sure before you leave this movie, you know every character, every character's motivation, why they're motivated by this thing, and why it's important to them and their family. And they do a great job of doing it. Even if you wipe away the, the point of the powers, it's still a powerful story of a young a young woman that's trying to find herself and find her place and who's been told that like she's this because of her abilities, of who she is. And then when those abilities are no longer there for her, she doesn't know who she is. And I thought, hey, and I'm like you, I would have preferred to see a prequel of this. Mm-hmm. I would have preferred to see her, that actually the mother raising the daughter, raising Ruth, and then having Ruth, and it, it, it ending with Ruth showing up on the doorstep with the baby. I would have rather have seen that story be told to see what Ruth went through from the drug abuse and all the stuff that was going on with her. Because again, I think when she didn't, couldn't get into her powers anymore, I think she felt like she lost a part of herself. She lost who she was, and she started resorting to what everybody does normally when you can't figure out who you are. You use to go substances to help you yeah. cope with that well, feeling that you don't feel whole. You exactly. Self-medicate. And so I thought this this movie did a great job. And I'm like, I'm, I agree with Jason. Jason did on the head. Power through it. And I'm gonna say power through it. It's intriguing. Like it's an interesting movie. Yeah. But if you don't if you don't know what you're in for, you're gonna be like, okay, they just talking. Why they just keep talking? And like you just keep going through the motions on here. One. Um, but like I said, the characters feel really uh, the mother, and God forgive me, I don't know her real name. This this her acting in this movie should have got her more roles. Because the mother, Bo, she's phenomenal in this movie. Mm-hmm. She is phenomenal. She's so good that it almost takes away that Ruth puts on a good, like a good performance. But when they go top, when they go head to head and toe to toe in the acting, she gets laps around her. And I and I feel <laughs> like it made me 
like you said, it made Rufo want to see more of the mother than anything because she was yeah. so good in this. And I think it hurts the movie. I think that's a real big thing that hurts the movie is that I don't think Ruth is strong enough as an actress to 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 do with these heavy this heavy hitter and it shows and every time they interact. Um, but but the performance is still good. Um, the one thing I will admire about this movie, you finally made a movie where the kid isn't freaking annoying. Yes. <laughs> the kid is good. the most rational person. She's the most rational person of the whole thing because she doesn't have the <laughs> traumatic baggage that the mother and Ruth have. So a lot of times when they get into it, she's usually the rational voice because that's what happens when you don't have trauma. When you don't have trauma, you're able to think clearly and go, well, no, that doesn't make any sense. Blah, 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 blah. And they have to answer to this girl that's like, Making complete sense, and they do kind of code like, it with why that, acting like that this? genius <laughs> and all that type of stuff. But still, I mean, it's oh, it's, ahead, it's great because, like, I mean, like, yeah, you know, a lot of times, uh, people have a one note way of writing children characters, and you know, and also children actors being children, they're not very good at it <laughs> because they're right. they've only been doing it for like a year. But this little girl, she came in here. Not only did they write her character very well, but she came in here and she acted very well. And it's just all shines, and it's it's great, um, right? Yeah, I mean it's it's you could you could call her kind of call her Mary Sue because she's fixing record players and and trucks, and I'm a grown ass man, I couldn't fix none of them shits. <laughs> I'll get to but that like I felt the same way. <laughs> they do something very slick in the movie, and I don't know if you caught it near the end when Ruth is with her father, and he goes, and this this line is completely in here for for what we're talking about. He goes. I know you're wondering why I got rid of the body shop, and I, but I figured becoming a sheriff would be an easy way to protect you. So they're setting up that genetically, like they, they're yeah, good with she their already, hands. And, yeah, good with their hands. Yeah, right. That I thought that was very slick that you put it in. Right, right, but right. Like right. Also, but it's also not like she's like, oh, I did this today, and like, look what I did in this five seconds. Like when she's fixing the truck, she, it takes her most of the movie to fix the truck. Right, Absolutely. she doesn't just fix it. Like, like in let's say Jurassic World. Where the kids find forty year old vehicles and they're like, "Oh, we got it fixed in two hours," you know, and like we're <laughs> right, driving away. Right. Like, no, that's not going to happen. And like, you know, and there's also a part where she's confronted because she is taking more tools than you know than they are buying, <laughs> using her powers to take the ones that she needs as well. But I also thought that's clever because, like, shit, if I had them powers, that's I what a the kid exact would same. do. Yeah, I right. would do the she exact even same thing. About it, be like. <laughs> If we got these powers, why can't we use them? Like, because that's yeah. what a kid would think and feel like I have this ability and we can't afford these things, so why not? But so again, I shout out to writing the character good, and we didn't have to hear any moment of being like, Well, you're not my real mom, or like you've never been around. Yeah. Like it was yeah. great to or see any like, of that this bullshit. Kid like, why can't I leave? Uh, I mean, she did say something like that, but there was a really cool moment where she's like, Well, you left, and she's like, I know exactly. See where that got me. <laughs> right so it's like right back don't here. repeat my yeah don't repeat my mistakes and i thought that was a really cool moment too also so, too like when they finally do the reveal of why ruth gave up you know gave up the child on it 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 makes sense like it makes good theatrical sense and also it helps with why ruth is the character she is by the time we meet her at the beginning i mm -hmm. thought that was a very like it, it it made great and it's rare that you get movies where you as a parent feel like that's she made the right decision for her kid, and I see why she did that. And you don't really have any clap back on it because it's like, yeah, like she was going to be a threat or dangerous to her child. Hell, the scene that made her realize she was a danger was heart stopping for me, and I knew what how it was going to end. But even I was like, oh my god, like <laughs> this is insane. And so, yeah, um, I thought that was pretty good. Uh, and again, I was said I would love to see a prequel. The only thing I would say that kind of uh, uh about me with the movie is. It's what you mentioned. Like, they have the shortage on water, but we never really get to see how that affects the world around them. Yeah. Now, I know really, it's because they really... spend so much time dealing with the characters and developing them and giving them what we needed. But I, I feel like if you're going to introduce the, the whole water crisis into it and then how the movie ends with whatever, whatever, I felt like you you had to play up really heavily how this water. It should have been more like a... it seemed like every. Oh. Right. Like a like a uh, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, what was that tank girl where it's just like everything's deserts and shit? Like it seems like there's not water, but there's a there's enough, and everybody's like we're still fine, but it's not right. fine. It's just, <laughs> just more inconvenience. We just can't just yeah. turn on the faucet. Like yeah, that's it. That's I, mean, what I, I, think, I wish that because they're, there were only selling water for like 
50 bucks for like a big old jug or whatever. And I'm like, that I'm, that's actually kind of like regular prices now. <laughs> well, we are getting close to a real life water crisis in the, yeah. the next 20 years. So uh, I don't got uh, no magical powers. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I did. That's the only critique I had was that I just wish one that probably sp- could have spent some of this up, but also that like, if you're going to introduce that whole water thing, like make it like, make it like fill into something with the line. But also again, when you watch this movie, you can definitely tell they thought in their mind they had a franchise on their hands and yeah. this is going to work. Sad thing is, is that if people watch this review and go and start watching this movie, they're going to feel like, damn, we could have had one of those things that we've been begging for in 2020 to 222 is why aren't we getting, like your mother said, movies that talk about black women, but I don't know slavery or I need a man and oh, yeah. man, like none of that kind of weak and weakness stuff, but strong black women that are out here doing their thing. And like love and protect their family, and that's what's important to them. So I feel like this movie, like Red Tails, definitely needs to get back on people's radars, and definitely people need to check these out and mm-hmm. give these they like, give them their flowers because this is a good movie. That if they would have made sequels to, I did find out that Viola Davis in 2019 was pushing to get Amazon to pick it up as a series. I didn't read more and see how that went, but how maybe you not still hope to out there that we get more. <laughs> I don't know why they don't listen to Vi- Viola Davis. Mm-hmm. You would think she has enough clout to make anything happen, but look, again, I'll be interested we to see if they actually is. do green light it because <laughs> that'd be fi- tight. <laughs> but uh, there's that, also Jason, a cool look, thing that I like for this movie as well is that the uh, scientist guy, um, not a complete bad guy. He was like, yo, I'm actually trying to help. Now, these other motherfuckers, they bad guy. <laughs> yeah, but I'm trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Jason, what would you rate Fast Colors? Uh, I would, yeah, after sitting through it, because it's slow, four out of five. <laughs> um, I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm four out of five on this as well. I, again, if you like dramatic movies, about, this is up your alley. Again, like Jason's right, you go, it's a 45-minute chunk, almost to an hour, where, again, it's intriguing, but it's like yeah. you want to see powers a- and shit. <laughs> it's a family trauma centered movie that doesn't have to deal with the tropes of normal black people family trauma, which is right. Great. <laughs> right, 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 right. Absolutely. Oh, but other than that, guys, thank you for listening and watching. Jason, do you have any final words for the people out there? I know it seems like the opposite, but be kind, be considerate to people, and I always tip your servers at least 20%, if not more, if you can afford it. But also, Absolutely. I apologize to no one. <laughs> In the famous <laughs> words of Conor McGregor. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Also, I, we'll, we'll talk about that off the case. But anyway, uh, guys, remember to pick up your books, Children of Blood and Bone, July 9th, 8 o'clock. We will be in the building doing our book review of this lovely and wonderful book here i'm gonna try to get the oh, author on but again covers, new york's man. you know new york town's bestsellers they busy as hell but maybe we can get her on here yes, sir. do some dope she beautiful look they at do it. a beautiful. dope interview with us um i tried to get the guy on for black sands i even listened to his live video and kept typing in hey we be doing our podcast to help us out and he never even addressed it but <laughs> like, look nope. brother may be busy <laughs> he may think that we bottom feeders and he don't want no time to deal with us and that's perfectly fine one day we may not be bottom feeders, and we can get them on the show. And I'll remind them that I typed that and be like, oh, did you not see that? Yeah. Huh, we'll huh. be the <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Tuesday Films. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sunday's already taken. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you all. Remember to get up the book. And I appreciate you guys watching. We will see you next week. Peace. Probably. Also, I was going to say, I really was like,